Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, we are going through my updated everyday carry. So I did an everyday carry video a little while ago. I've been kind of holding off on doing another one, but I finally feel like enough has changed over the last couple years that it's worth doing another video. Uh, I really kind of have a system down that I like, so I was kind of avoiding really mixing things up until I started to upgrade some of the tech and other equipment that I've been carrying on me. Honestly, some of it is just laziness. I'm carrying a little bit less than I once did. Now, you guys know that I'm a little bit long-winded when it comes to you know, the why behind what I do, and this video is gonna be no different. So I do wanna go into kind of why I'm carrying what I have in front of you, why it seems like a lot. And the biggest thing that comes up in the comments on these videos, especially from people in Europe and other countries is, why do you feel like you need that? And the concept of need is kind of interesting when it comes to everyday carry because most of the time I will not need medical supplies, a firearm, things like that. But when you need it, you really need it. So I do not feel like I'm in danger on a daily basis. I don't feel like the United States is really that dangerous despite what you see on the news. I feel safe, but I do want to be able to defend my family and myself. So with all of that being said, let's get into the video. Now, I want to start with kind of the normal everyday carry things, this box right here that um, pretty much everybody has some form of. So first, I finally upgraded my cell phone. This is the iPhone 13 Pro uh, Max or the large one, whatever. It's actually super useful to have something with a decent camera on it just because I am filming stuff all the time. It's nice, you know, in the helicopter to be able to take a quick video that sort of thing. I got it with like 500 gigs and it, I, I got it too small. I've already filled it up, but really good, really good cameras on it. Um, like the phone, you know, I like the Apple ecosystem. I use the, the new MacBook Pro for all my editing uh, and it's great. Now, I don't know who needs to hear this though. Cinematic mode on this thing sucks. Don't use cinematic mode, turn off the HDR setting. Uh, there are some weird video settings built into this when you first get it. So don't use cinematic mode if you can help it. It does not look good. It looks good for a second and then you see their hair and it, it just completely ruins it. All right, so the thing that I'm most excited about uh, for this video is my new watch. So this, I've had it for about a week. It is the Garmin Tactics 7. Um, I'm gonna do a full review on this watch in a couple weeks, so I'm not gonna go super in depth with it, but I finally upgraded from the uh, Apple Watch Series 2 to this guy and it's three times the cost. This thing is a pretty penny, but I have it on me every day. I use it for work. It's tax deductible because of that. Um, and this has just a ton of features on it. So first and foremost, it has all your normal like tracking stuff on it. So I can track activities like my run, treadmill runs, bike, uh, strength training, all of that. And it does a really good job of tracking all of that information for me. Uh, it even has like a little tactical widget where if you're like doing drills and stuff with the SWAT team, I can throw that on and just see how far I've moved, how many calories I've burned. Is it really necessary? No, but I really enjoy it. Um, as we come up on the watch a little bit more, and I, I hope you guys can kind of see this. We'll, we'll see if I have to do anything about it. We have the uh, fly icon. So while I'm flying, I can track our flights and it gives me a lot of different stats uh, as we're going, including like ground speed, um, if we're going up or down, the altitude we're at, just interesting things to be tracking. It can also track my SpO2 if we're flying over like a big mountain range above 14,000 feet. Um, it will give me my SpO2 reading uh, as we go. So that's kind of a neat feature. And it also tracks stress, which for those of you that have done uh, helicopter EMS, that's that's a big deal. So I love this watch for a variety of different reasons. Other things it's got, it's got a little flashlight on it. So uh, you can see it here. This is its lowest setting and I can turn it to green for if we're under night vision goggles in the cabin, but the light is just super handy and I don't feel the need to carry a separate flashlight really anymore. And then other things got, you know, your heart rate and the best feature is that the battery in this thing lasts a month and it continually monitors your heart rate. It, it's doing so much. So I absolutely love this watch, uh, despite the price tag. I think the only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that the screen's a lot darker than your your average Apple Watch. But, you know, I'll take that over a month of battery life of continually on my wrist. 
Uh, here I've got the Apple AirPods. This is the Apple AirPods 2. It's in kind of a silly case, but I love these things. Compare it to my phone. Uh, compare it to the watch and listen to music just on that. If I'm going for a run, I don't even need to take my phone. Uh, and it's absolutely amazing. All right, keys. Uh, they're just keys, except for the AirTag I put on them. I get it. Apple knows my location all the time. They know that anyways with my phone. But I can ding my keys. I can get a little finder. I am a very forgetful person, so... I lose these things all the time. It's really nice to have an uh, AirTag on them. Uh, wallet, I'm using the Live the Creed wallet. So I use a lot of stuff from these guys. They make really good products. And I, you know, there's nothing special about this wallet except that they made it. It's leather. It's got a little multi-cam pattern on the inside, but it's not like overtly tactical or like tactical, anything like that. I really like this wallet. Uh, holds about three cards inside and then has a space for cash. Doesn't fit cash super well, but I don't usually carry a whole lot on me anyways. So that's the wallet I'm using. All right, uh, belt. Um, for concealed carry and everything, you need a little bit of a stiffer belt. You shouldn't be doing it with a really flimsy belt because that'll mess with the retention of your holster uh, as you're pulling it up. This is the First Spear Roll 1. Um, I like it because it's just a simple belt. It works the exact same way as anything else. It looks pretty low pro. I, biothane, I think, is the material on it but it's sturdy, it's easy to put on, um, and I don't really have to do anything special with it. So is it the best belt in the world? No, but it works really well for me. Uh, the Oakley flak jackets are the sunglasses I'm using, really nothing special about them, polarized, but uh, especially out here in Colorado, you don't wanna go anywhere without uh, sunglasses. Now, uh, firearm. The firearm itself uh, has not changed, so here I'll just show you guys. Unloaded. Um, so this is a Glock 19 um, with an Trijicon RMR sight, uh, suppressor height night sights, and then a, what is this, Enforce uh, light on the front. Not the most expensive light, um, not the most expensive firearm, but I've turned it into an expensive firearm. I had the slide milled by Jaeger Works just to get the RMR on and then put some front fenestrations uh, on it so I can do the press check um, as we go. So. Other than that, it's stock. I haven't changed the trigger, which I probably should, um, but a really good, reliable firearm. And I've never drawn this on anybody. I've never felt like I've had to, um, but especially now that I have a kid, you know, protecting my family is something that's important for, uh, to me. You know, being able to intervene if something's going on is important to me. So I really try to have this uh, on me whenever possible. But obviously there's some places I can't carry it. Uh, that just is what it is. And then for a holster, I've went from the tier one concealed with the sidecar to just a really simple tier one concealed uh, Kydex holster with one belt clip. And I like this because I don't have to put my belt over to the side. It's just easier to carry it. What I noticed with the bigger holster with the extra mag is I just wasn't carrying it because it was inconvenient for me. So this just makes it easy to carry. I can throw it in pretty much any pair of pants I own with this belt. I don't have to do anything crazy with the buckle uh, and it conceals relatively well. That being said, I, I'm really not trying to, like I'm concealing, but I'm not super worried about printing anymore. I've just noticed that nobody actually noticed if you're printing or not. So uh, this is what I'm using for it. If you have a firearm, I would definitely recommend having a light on it. Um, that's super important uh, just because your firearm's only good uh, about 50% of the places you go without the light. So make sure you have some kind of light on it there. And then I use the standard uh, capacity magazines, the uh, 16 rounds, I think it's 16 plus one uh, in the Glock 19. If I get one like thing wrong with this, uh, everybody's gonna jump down my throat. I think I said in one of my other EDC videos, I was talking about this clip here and I said clip and like the word clip just triggers everybody in the gun community because they all think, no pun intended, they all think I'm talking about the magazine. No, I'm talking about the actual belt clip here and there's nothing fancy about this belt clip. All right, last but not least, we're coming to the medical section of it. And I go a little bit overboard here. This is where my expertise lie. I've been in certain situations where I've wanted medical supplies and haven't had them. And I've kind of told myself that I would never uh, let that happen again. And I carry one of these three items uh, on me every day. More and more, I'm going to just, I've been moving to just carrying um, the LE Quick Clot just because honestly, it fits in a pocket super well. Um, it's really compact. You can do a lot with this. You can stop arterial hemorrhages from pretty much any appendage, junctional sites, 
It's really versatile. Uh, you can even use this as a pressure bandage if you just need to wrap something. So this is what I carry a lot of the time if I'm just going minimalist. And when it comes to everyday carry, if it's inconvenient for you to carry something, you're not gonna carry it. So I personally like just going with this. I think this is four yards of it. It's got the hemostatic agent in it, which is great. If you can't afford this, which is running about $55 a pack now, you can just get the packing gauze and honestly, it's gonna work just fine. Truthfully, your t-shirt's gonna work fine as well. Um, so you don't have to carry medical supplies. I just uh, choose to. Now, a little bit up from that, if I'm wearing shorts um, and I don't have somewhere to put an ankle kit, I'm carrying the Live the Creed Pocket Trauma Kit. I think that's what it's called. Um, and this has some hemostatic agent in it. It's got the SWAT T, which is not ideal. It's not a TCCC uh, recommended tourniquet, but honestly, it works for a lot of cases. I'm well trained in it. Um, so it's kind of a compromise for space saving. And then this guy also has a boo-boo kit uh, inside of it with like the stuff that you're gonna need on a daily basis. So band-aids, bacitracin, um, alcohol prep pads, things like that. And that sits right in here. That's actually really important stuff to have. And out of all of these supplies, that's what I've used the most uh, out of anything else. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. So this can fit in your back pocket. If I'm wearing like cargo pants or something, I'll put that in a side pocket, but I also will throw it in a backpack, things like that. It's just a little bit too big to comfortably ride in your back pocket. If you took out the SWAT T, it would probably fit a lot better. All right. And last but not least, and this is kind of a, a new thing that I've been carrying. Um, I've always been carrying an ankle kit, but I recently switched out from the uh, Dark Angel Medical ankle trauma kit to this one. This is by Six Echo Systems, and I they sent it to me, and I first looked at it, I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but as I started to use it, it's actually pretty cool. So it's a neoprene uh, fabric, and I can get this really tight on my ankle so it holds it really close, get my pant leg over it, no problem. Uh, and then these guys here, you can actually adjust the sizing on all of the retention straps. So if you want something to ride higher or lower, you can adjust that to make it work. Um, in here, I'm carrying the uh, soft tee. Uh, this guy is the soft tee wide uh, generation three, I wanna say. It's got the retention thing here. And I like these guys because they, they just fold so flat. If you wanna make it even flatter, you can, you can take off this retention clip, but this really helps for self-application on your arms. And I, I keep it on there um, all the time because it's a little bit easier for self-application. So that sits in this top flap. I think the only thing I don't like about it, honestly, is this top flap. I'd like this to go away because it just adds unneeded bulk, in my opinion. Uh, and then in here, I've got a thing of H&H &H, uh, gauze. This is just a trauma wrap. You know, somebody has a head wound, an arm wound, or you need to wrap um, a packed wound in. This is just a pressure bandage for that. That's flat folded. It's by H&H. &H. And then in this one, I've got a thing of quick clot packing gauze. This is the military version. Now, there is zero difference between these two. They're the same length. They have the same active ingredient in them. There's no different. They're just differently colored. So if you see like one of these is cheaper than the other one, go with the cheaper one because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. And then the last two things I have in here, something I honestly, I probably will never use uh, in a EDC kit, but I've got an ARS needle for chest decompressions. And then I have an NPA, nasal pharyngeal airway, to open somebody's airway up. If we're doing like CPR or something like that, most of the time, unless it's a family member, I'm gonna do compressions only. I'm not going to do 30 to two, uh, just because potential uh, germs, all of that stuff. But with this, I can open their airway and then every time you press on their chest, a little bit more is gonna get in. Uh, this is also great for somebody, you know, overdosing or head injury, something like that. So got this, it's a seven millimeter, which I believe is a 28 French. Um, I, I think it, it converts to that. So that's what I have in this kit. Now this thing's really nice. I like it, really high quality, so check them out. But I don't get any money for any of this stuff. I'm not sponsored on this channel. So in the near future, I'm going to try to get dedicated reviews out on this watch because I think this thing is amazing, uh, as well as this ankle kit by Six Echo Systems. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.